morning. morning. Welcome to Light of the Valley. We're technically in the season of end times as the church year is coming to a close. And so we've talked about various things, anything from our last judgment to the coming of the Antichrist. But today, knowing that tomorrow is November 11th, Veterans Day, just taking a moment out to recall what does God say for the, the veteran, for the soldier. Uh, so that's going to be our focus through the uh, service today, um, including special prayers all geared towards celebrating Veterans Day. Uh, so we'll begin, uh, as you see, a service is printed there starting on page 3. We'll begin with our first hymn, which is hymn 537, Onward Christian Soldiers. Hymn 537. We ask God to bless your worship here today.
page three in our worship folder. <clears throat> Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. We begin in the name of the Father, who laughs at all who dare to war against him. In the name of the Son, who wages war against Satan to establish our eternal peace. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who arms us with weapons for spiritual warfare. O Lord, equip us to be soldiers of the cross, ready to fight for you. Amen. The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America states, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Our government allows us to freely and legally gather and worship our God. This blessing is not just from man, but it is truly from God. The Apostle Paul, under direction from God, wrote in Romans chapter 13, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And so we invite those who wish to pledge their allegiance, knowing that without God, this nation would not exist. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Praise be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for wars, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. O Lord, what is man that you care for him, the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the heavens, touch the mountains, so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the ten-stringed lyre I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David from the deadly sword. We confess. Almighty God, I have foolishly taken up arms against you, challenging your authority and resisting your will. I have declared a war in which I am destined to lose. I raise the flag of surrender and confess my shameful guilt. Do not treat me as my sins deserve, but for the sake of Jesus, the conquering King, grant me a full pardon. Jesus has defeated sin, death, and the devil. He rides forth in triumph, granting a free and full pardon to every sinner who seeks it. By the authority given in the gospel, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, my God, I call to you for help, and you answered me. I thank you for the love you have shown me in Jesus Christ, my Savior. Through him you have rescued me from the guilt of my sin, and given me the peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We pray. O Lord our God, govern the nations on earth and direct the affairs of this world, so that your church may worship you in peace and joy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, our great shepherd warrior who sacrificed himself for our freedom from sin and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First Bible reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. When you read through the accounts of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, all of these, it gives a lot of history of the kings of Israel, especially in some warfare. In this account, not one that we would normally hear about, but Jonathan, the son of King Saul, goes and takes arm up, arms up against the Philistines. And there he gives the battle completely to God. God would give them the victory based on what happens so we hear of Jonathan's confident trust along with his armor bearer here in 1 Samuel 14. 
Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead, I am with you, heart and soul. Jonathan said, Come here then. We will cross over toward them and let them see us. If they say to us, Wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, we will climb up, because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan his armor bearer, Come up to us and we'll teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hands of Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in the area of about half an acre. This is the word of our Lord. Second Bible reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. These words will serve as the basis of this morning's sermon. We hear. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand to sing the Alleluia's. And so it is here, the day before Jesus will commit that, that, that total, ultimate sacrifice on the cross, he tells and instructs his disciples to love as he has loved them, which includes laying down your life for people. We hear now from John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Invite the children come up for the children's message.
combat um, somewhere in, in the, the field of battle. Um, so we think about these people and they do something pretty amazing in that they sacrifice their lives for us, but they even sacrifice their lives in terms of just serving in the military so that we can gather here in a place like this and talk about God. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. It's really the greatest sacrifice. See, Jesus, we can sometimes think of Jesus as a great soldier. Because what did, what did he do? Yeah. Who was the enemy he was fighting? The devil, right? Is that what you say there is? Yeah. All right, see, the devil. And so when he, and he said that really low, Mark, when he rose from the dead, it's like he stomped the devil's head in defeat. And he won. No, it's like he stomped the devil's head. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, that's better. He said that better. Yep, stomp the devil's head. He's not going to, he can't win. He lost. Um, the devil. The devil lost, yeah. <laughs> I'm mixing up my words. Sorry about that. But it made me think about this. Is Have you known anyone who died for you? Yeah. Some of you might. All of us know one person who died for us. Jesus. And that was Jesus. He died so that you could live. That you could have your sins all taken away. That you could live with him forever in heaven. So we can talk about him being the soldier who made the greatest sacrifice. He did for he did for everyone. Some people, yeah, but some people don't know it. Yeah, some people don't know it. And some people reject it. Well, there's sometimes that too. There's rich people who sometimes don't care about things either. So yeah, there's a lot. But that is actually what motivates us to go and tell others so that they can know that Jesus has made this sacrifice for them too. So maybe we need to think about that. Think about others. We, need, we can honor our soldiers, honor our veterans, but also let's tell people about the greatest soldier, Jesus, who died to take away our sins. All right? So let's pray about that. Let's pray right now. Dear Lord, we thank you that you came, you loved us so much that you sacrificed yourself so that we would be free from our sins, that we could live forever with you in heaven. So help us to tell others about you, to serve others in the great way that you have served us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your parents. Thanks for coming. Okay. All right, let's continue by singing our next hymn, which is hymn 441, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, hymn 441.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this, uh, this morning was the second Bible reading we heard from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. Let's give meditation on that word. Let's pray. Lord, as we remember your sacrifice, may it motivate us to love others as you have loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, John writes, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Just by the fact that we had the Gospel of John, we had this reading from 1 John, love is a topic that comes up quite a bit by the Apostle. Anyone who loves God must love his brother and sister. How good do we do with that? I'd hope, if I asked, do you love your brother or sister, and we're talking in this relationship of the church, our brother and sister in Christ, that the immediate answer you give well, yeah. Yeah, I love my brother and sister, absolutely. I love them. We say it, do we live it? Are we building our brothers and sisters up? Or do we tear them down? Do we help them when they're in need? Or do we ignore them? Tell ourselves it's not my problem. Do we defend them? Speak well of them? or destroy their reputation? Do we love our brothers and sisters? Because John also says, whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. It's kind of a big gut check to start the sermon on. Huh? If I don't adequately love my brothers or sisters, that means I can't adequately love God. So hopefully what we're thinking as we start right away is how can we overcome this? How can we change this situation? Yep, we don't always love our brothers and sisters, so how can we love? And John tells us with these verses where we have to start. It starts by being loved. This is love. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. I mean, that is the culmination of love, isn't it? That Jesus laid down his life for us. Probably the very first thought we have comes when we think of the cross. We think of the sacrifice that he made for us to think, has there been anyone else who not just said that they were willing to die for us, but actually didn't? And to think that when Jesus, every insult that he took, every blow that he received, every drop of blood that he bled, every single component of that was done because he loves us. That's the culmination of Jesus laying down his life for us. But we know that he spent 33 years leading up to that laying down his life for us day in and day out. He did it by laying down his life under the law of God. That as his brothers and sisters didn't necessarily get along with him and insulted him and refused to believe in him, he didn't lash out with anger. He didn't go and tattle on them. No, he loved. He had compassion. He had pity, not just for his own family members, but anybody and everyone who came to see him. How many hours he spent healing people, preaching to them, teaching them, showing that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and gave himself as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus' love for us is a sacrifice. And as we're coming up, it's November 10th today, tomorrow's November 11th. Around here, I think we all know what that day is. It's Veterans Day. I've already mentioned it a couple times, so if you didn't know, you don't know. But on that day, you remember the sacrifices people have made. 
you look through the annals of the history of our country, you'll find out about 42 million people have served in our military since our nation began, since 1775. You know, right before the Declaration of Independence, all that stuff. Out of that, we have at least 39 people I know of attached to our congregation who have served. Then there's another number. Number is about 1,200,000. 1,200,000 people died so that we could be here today. That we could have the freedoms that we get to exercise the freedom to meet and exercise our religion without hindrance. The freedom as, uh, if any of you did, this last week there were elections for our local governments. Freedoms to speak our mind and even disagree with those politicians. You think about all these men and women who have served our country in the military. And they have sacrificed. Some have paid that ultimate sacrifice with their life. Others have simply sacrificed their, their lives in terms of their time, their talents. They have lived serving this country. They have done it kind of in much the way that Jesus loved us. Do you figure Jesus loved everyone? Jesus made that sacrifice for every single person in the entire world, even for the very people who hated him and rejected him. He still sacrificed himself for them. How many other of our military have sacrificed their lives so that other people could disagree with what they're doing? Sacrifice for people who maybe are anti-military. We think about this and we hear Jesus' words. We think about all these sacrifices and we know what love is. Love is that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and the immediate thought that follows, and we ought to lay down our lives for brothers, our brothers and sisters. The response to sacrifice. Now with Jesus, we kind of know what we do. We, we know we get together, we hear his word, that we sing praises to his name, we pray to him, we try to live our lives according to his commands. We know that these are the ways that we say thank you to God for his ultimate sacrifice, that we in turn serve him. But he says, love one another as I have loved you, love one another. And so it turns the thought around now to the people we see every day. And yeah, I know not all, all the people who serve in the military are Christians. But still, Jesus' sacrifice motivates us to love one another, to love our brothers and sisters. So what does that look like? Me, I've, I've never enlisted. I have no family that I'm aware of that have served um, in the military. And so moving here, being here, being near an Air Force base, and then it's a very common thing to go out and about and see people in fatigues, to see them in uniform. And I know that they are sacrificing so that I can be here. That I can do what I can do. And so I want to say thank you. But admittedly, I know when it comes to shows of appreciation, not everybody receives that the same way. And the way that I may want to receive gratitude for doing something may not be the same way that another person wants to receive gratitude, so I decided I'll just ask. So I asked a number of veterans, how do you want to be thanked? Because I know the other part of this, the part that John talks about, it says that if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? These people, these veterans, are sacrificing for us. How can I show my appreciation? How can I love them as God loved me? 
So the answers were pretty uniform, and it's maybe just too simple, but all the veterans said, just say thank you. And they also said, don't stare at them, wondering, what should I say? I know I've done that. Because it's going through my head, I want to, I want to show some sort of appreciation. How do I do that? And apparently I just say thank you. Thank you for your service. And that's all they really want. They don't want a big show. They don't want you to announce it over loudspeakers. They don't want you to go around and, and bring them around to everybody and say, you know what this guy did? You know what this person did for me? No, just simple, under the radar, discreet. And if we are in a place where we have these possessions, if we have been blessed by God abundantly, yeah, that's, that's an okay thing if you want to pay for a meal. Pay for a drink. But again, I was told don't make a big show out of it. And in fact, some said don't even ask. Just do it. Because if you ask, they're going to say no. Because they can handle themselves. And maybe even focus on those who are maybe younger. Because, you know, they probably don't have the advantages of those who are older, those who have been serving longer. Just simple little things. And it came to think about those when they're deployed. It's going to be a pretty tough time. For the ones who are in the service, who are deployed, I was told, just simply remember that's where we are. We didn't just drop off the face of the earth. We didn't just stop coming to church. But we're serving our country. And if you have access, if you have ability, let them know, hey, we remember you. We were thinking about you. That maybe you find yourself in a place that you can share something with them that you've just read from the Bible, that you can build them up as a brother or sister in Christ. I mean, something so simple as Psalm 23. Reminding them that the Lord is their shepherd, that he is walking with them every single day, through every single danger. And this is what's appreciated. But then there's also the families, the families of those who are deployed. Now, I was told again through these surveys that I did that, first of all, don't assume they need help. Don't assume they can't handle it. Because, as I was told by many, they're tough. They knew what they were getting into. They knew what they were signing up for. And they probably are self-sufficient. So if you do ask to help with something and they say no, don't think, well, they just don't like me. No, no, they probably actually can't handle it. But it can be a lonely time. And even though they're tough and they can handle it, it doesn't mean we should ignore them. Maybe all it takes is simply reaching out and being a friend. Maybe... It's just sitting down, talking with them so that they don't feel so alone. Maybe what it is is if they have kids that you come in, maybe offer some babysitting so that the other person could go and run some errands without the kids, or maybe just have some time at home for some me time where they're not just taking care of kids. If you're handy, offer what you can do. If you have the extra time, the ability, maybe you can help with yard work. Maybe, maybe you want to start something else out. And I know like in the Air Force and other military programs, they have something similar to this. In the Air Force, it's called the Key Spouse Program that just meant specifically to help the families of those who are deployed. But that's only as good as the people running it. So as the church, we can offer different things. We offer a family of faith. A family where we gather together, united by just one thing, and it's our God. To pray for these people, to pray with these people, to remind them that we have a God who is powerful, who is watching over all of us, and who is going to see us through anything that comes. Now, I'm sure there's a whole lot more ways that we can show our appreciation, and I kind of, when I sent out the surveys, I thought I would get these, these really cool, intricate things that I could share with you, but it really came down to simply say thank you, if you want to. 
and do it discreetly. Don't make a big show of it. And it's so simple. And yet, that's just one way, a simple way, every single one of us can show gratitude to those who have put their lives on the line so that we can be here and enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. But at this point, I've talked a whole lot about just what to do. I've just done a whole lot of talking, and I know that. John tells us, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So maybe I've spent too much time talking. Because the real point is to go and do, to go and act, to show the love of God with these expressions of attitude, instead of just talking about doing this. So for the times that I fail to love my brothers and sisters, for the times that I fail to show gratitude for the people who have served me without even knowing me, who have sacrificed for me without me ever loving them, for that, Lord, forgive me. Instead, we come back to the greatest soldier and his greatest sacrifice. The one that no veteran could give us. No one person could ever die and free us from sins, free us from the, the control of the devil, free us from an eternity in hell, but Jesus did. He laid down his life so that we would have these eternal freedoms. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful and help us show that each day with our lives, with how we act, with our speech, how we treat one another. So first of all, Lord, we thank you for sacrificing yourself as our great soldier so that we would be freed from sin, death, and the devil. Now, Lord, help us to love in action and in truth the people who sacrifice for us. So for all of you who are veterans here today, thank you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue by confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find that on page 9 in the worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Just a note before we gather our gifts and offerings to our Lord. To our guests and visitors who are with us today, it's a pleasure to have you. We're so thankful you came here to hear about the sacrifice of our ultimate soldier, Jesus Christ. Um, if you'd like to know more about what we teach, preach, believe here at Light of Valley or would like me to contact you this following week, we have contact cards in the racks by the hymnals and every second and fourth chair. Just fill that out with your name and whatever, whatever information you want me to use um, that I'll contact you this next week. And you can put that in the offering plate as it comes around or you can add it to me at the end of service today. So that in mind, let's continue our worship by gathering offerings to our King.
Please stand for prayer. We'll use the prayer of the church as it starts on the top of page 10 in our worship folder. We pray. Everlasting protector and defender, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the guns of World War I fell silent. To celebrate this armistice, a holiday was made of this date, but the world soon learned that the war to end all wars did not. A series of wars followed with increasing efficiency in killing. The date's meaning was changed to honor everyone who has served in our nation's armed forces. We know now that it was not the war to end all wars. We think of the Americans who left homes and families to risk their lives in defense of our nation as enemies continued to rise against our nation. We recognize that we owe them a debt of gratitude. We thank and honor the active and former military personnel who are connected to our congregation. Larry Anthony, Jake Bergeron, John Bergeron, Frank Began, Larry Cantarello, Clayton Carlson, Robert Curtis, Kevin Cutcom, Joe Davis, Jaime Diaz, Richard Elliott, Alan Emery, Jeff Eby, Lucy Eby, Dan Goble, Laura Goble, Jacob Gomez, Larry Hendrickson, Glenda Hoffman, Rory Hoffman, Jonathan Jones, Charles Kidd, Kelly Connect, Brian Koopman, Roxanne Lopez, Melissa McAdams, Nova McNabb, Eric Meitzen, Steve Mimo, Alfred Padaya, J.D. Payne, Matt Ruder, Todd Ricevy, David Schimmel, Joel Schwartz, Maria Schwartz, Gary Turk, Steve Vanderwall. We thank you, Lord, for our military veterans. Through them, you have provided us with blessings that people around the world envy. The presence of our veterans, however, reminds us that your warning that wars and rumors of wars will continue until the end of time. In your mercy, keep war from our shores and frustrate the plans of all who would cause us terror. Lord of the nations, we ask that you would continue to bless our country with men and women who are willing to go to distant and dangerous places to protect us from those who would do us harm. We pray that you will continue to bless us with veterans who have served faithful and true. Be with our veterans as they continue their march through life. Protect them from the ambush of sin and the firepower of Satan. Give them the health and strength they need to carry out the missions in life that you have laid before them. Lord, be their shield and their strength, their guide and their rear guard. Give to them the peace that surpasses all understanding as they place their trust in Christ Jesus. When their tour of duty in this world is over, Give them the order to come home. Bring them to where there are no more wars. Grant to them this blessing, that when we are listening to taps being played over their graves, they may be listening to the joyous trumpet call of God and the music of heaven's choirs. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing that this is not just words that we speak, but it is action action that we lay into your hands and know that you will operate as the Lord of all, the ruler of the earth. We pray on behalf of Timmy Short that you would ease his discomfort and that you would restore his health. As he has a doctor's appointment coming up this week, Lord, we ask that you would provide guidance and direction from the doctors who oversee him, that they would provide a treatment going forward that would restore his health. Lord, we also pray on behalf of of Amanda Coopin, that the treatments that she has undertaken would make a lasting change for her health, and that she would be restored to us. All these things, Lord, we grant, we ask that you would grant, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.
hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please remain standing for our final hymn, which is hymn 619, God Bless Our Native Land. Hymn 619. sacrifice of our greatest soldier, which then in turn, out of his love for us, we love one another. Uh, so I'm sure you'll have opportunity. There's plenty here um, in the congregation even this morning. But thank you to all our veterans. Thank you for your service. And I'm not going to make any more of a big deal about that because that's what I was told not to do. Um, but um, if you see a veteran, thank him or her, whoever you see. Uh, as far as announcements go, you can see uh, what's there, what's coming up. Um, so this week, particularly, we've got a couple of things. Uh, we have the Santa's Workshop, uh, kids' uh, kind of craft project where they can make Christmas gifts. Uh, that's supposed to be a little bit of a youth fundraiser, too, at the same time. Uh, that'll be this Friday from 6 to 8.30. And then on Saturday, starting at 9, we'll have a uh, fall yard cleanup day. Um, probably not just the yard. Uh, Ray Jacob will probably do a few other things too. Yeah, we do some indoor stuff. Uh, three quarters of the outside, but um, we do have some inside stuff for those that want to get in the furniture. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you have a question about any of the activities, because there's lots of different things that can be done, just talk with Jacob. Uh, he can set you right. Um, other than that, you can see the other events coming up um, and the other things that are happening, uh, devotions that are available. Uh, things like that. I'll just leave the rest of the announcements up to you. So uh, say hello to the people you come to worship with. Uh, feel free to come on over to the fellowship hall, grab some goodies, and uh, enjoy some time with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I'll get to the back to uh, shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on your week.